Chapter 2, the logistics environment. We're going to talk about security requirements in logistics. Knowing what you're getting and who it's coming from is always very important. There are many federal and state agencies that we have to enforce laws of importation and exportation. Se security at facilities is always very important. The higher the value of the product being distributed increases the need for security, not only for personnel safety, but for product inventory control. You don't want people stealing your gold jewelry or nice watches or perhaps even firearms or tires, or everything that ships internationally. Security is very, th very important. At a facility, you will see fences, you'll see gates, security guards. Lighting is also very important. Closed circuit TVs, you'll see it more and more. We even see these in the classroom. Alarm systems. All of these uh, stopgap measures help increase our level of security. Personnel security. Identification badges. Many companies will go through an elaborate process to identify their employees in a secure way that is a proprietary process which makes it very difficult to duplicate, to forge. There's ver voice verification, there's, uh, what's the term, biometrics is another form of a uh, definite identification, retinal scan, thumbprint. These are all being utilized at different levels of security for personal identification. Uh, we see in the news sometimes, uh, we, they call it terrorist activities in uh, oil field locations uh, all over the world where their whole production process is disrupted and uh, people are dying and there's security issues there and uh, there's all important issues that need to be addressed in any global supply network. International security rules and regulations. Customs trade partnership against terrorism. CTPAT. It's a very important global supply chain security initiative. It's a voluntary system established by the U.S. Bureau of Customs and Border Protection. Its chief goal is to create an environment of close cooperation between U.S. importers, carriers, and international exporters. Again, this is a voluntary operation where shippers have a much faster process going through borders. Time is money. Security is ultimately important. We want to know when a container comes from overseas that it came from a secure port, from a secure shipper, uh, to interfere with the possibility of uh, contraband being shipped into the country, or even drugs, or just, just anything that's, that's illegal, and heaven forbid, even people. Another uh, government initiative is the FAST program, which is between the United States, Canada, and Mexico. It guarantees safety and security, but boosts profits for each country. Faster clearance to CTPAT members' cargoes at U.S. borders. Eligibility requires participants to submit an application and agree to a security profile, depending on their role in CTPAT and FAST programs. Another initiative is uh, the CSI, Container Security Initiative, where criteria for identifying high-risk containers is established. Containers are pre-screened before they arrive at U.S. ports, and they pre-screen high-risk containers, developing more secure containers. We see cargo ships on the 
television, on the news, or perhaps even in the Mississippi River, uh, with products coming from all over the world. Uh, we are a global economy, and sometimes we just have to ask ourselves the question, do we want to pay, uh, we're going to say we're going to buy a hammer, we'll go to our local Walmart store or whatever, and we have two choices. One hammer is $5, the other hammer is $9. What are you going to buy? Or do you look at the label, what country is it produced in? You can guess, the hammer made in China perhaps is the $5 one, the one made in America is $9. You pay the $9 a year supporting Americans in America. But which one will you buy if it's just a hammer? You have to answer that question yourself. But we are a global economy. And these products from China have probably come from a container that was secure and inspected and reasonably uh, guaranteed to be free from defect, free from corruptness in the manifest. Another government agency is the ISA, Interconnection Security Agreement. It's a federally mandated for any system, contractor, or agency that touches the federal network, including those connected to CBP. ISAs are intended to minimize security risk and ensure confidentiality, integrity, and availability of government information. Network interconnection is defined as the direct connection of two or more IT networks. Purpose of sharing data and other information resources. Shipments that are going in this way will have an internet connection. A shipper has to notify the receiver via the internet that a shipment is planned. Uh, they will specify the dates, the method of shipment, estimated arrival time, and the costs and many other important security issues. Confirmation is returned by the receiver that they were willing to accept this shipment and plans to continue. It's a continuous back and forth via the internet on shipping and receiving issues. And other government regulations. The Clean Water Act and the Clean Air Act are very important. They regulate industrial waste disposal and uh, any other activities that have the potential to contaminate air and water. The Superfund is a name of a comprehensive environmental response which has established a multi-billion dollar fund for cleaning up hazardous wastes that have been left by, behind by uh, unscrupulous operators or people that have gone out of business and cannot afford to clean up the mess they've left behind. Their uh, business ventures have, have ended and for some reason there's a hazardous material. Perhaps you've seen uh, a former uh, gas station where they're digging up the fuel tanks and they have a lot of dirt to take out. Perhaps that tank leaked and all that soil that was near the contamination is hauled off and disposed of as a hazardous waste. This is a very expensive process and many uh, business places have to have nowadays a uh, environmental impact study done before anyone will approve financing any kind of business venture. It has to be verified that that property has never been a site where hazardous materials could have been improperly disposed of. So what is a hazardous material? So any substance or material that the United States Department of Transportation has determined is capable of posing an unreasonable risk to health, safety, and property when transported in commerce. Now I'd like for us to look at security at a facility. I would like for you to go to your drawing tablet and make a, uh, a, a, an overhead view like you're in a balloon say a thousand feet in the air and you're looking down on a piece of property that has a building. Lay out your building, lay out your property borders, an access road and put security 
What kind of securities can you imagine would make this place a secure place to ship and receive products from?